I'm Big Ben with BTS Photography, bringing you another exciting strobus tutorial slash behind the scenes look at what I do. Uh, you haven't seen me in a while, that's because I've been busy shooting weddings and screaming kids and all sorts of lovely uh, stuff. Finally we're getting back to doing some trade work and having a little bit of fun uh, shooting some models and some conceptual portraiture. Uh, today we're with our lovely model, uh, Audrey. And Audrey is a full-time cosmetologist mm -hmm. and a part-time model. Uh, she approached me on shooting a concept about kind of like a wine type of deal. I guess we could call it more of a role. I, what would you call this? What would be the proper nomenclature? You know, I'm, I'm stumped. You got me on that one. I would not know what you call it. We're shooting something, but we don't. We know what we're doing. We know what the concept is, but there isn't really any words to put it. It's more uh, we're putting her kind of in a cocktail dress, something uh, tasteful yet sexy, and using the wine. And we got the old 1950s vintage chair over there. Later, we're going to bring out my prop bed and have her lay on that, and kind of have the spilt wine on the glass, indicating some type of emotional something. Uh, we are shooting on a white backdrop that I'm going to be dropping to slightly lighter than a medium gray. Uh, we've got our Ellen Crom Ranger Quadras here, uh, and as you know with these Ranger Quadras, those of you that own them, that they are on an asymmetrical power pack, meaning one light gets 60%, 66% power, while the other one gets 33% power. I think that equals 100, right? 66 plus 33. And so, to do this right, uh, I have got the key light in the lower setting, the B outlet, which is at 33% of the power. And the other part of the power ratio was in my rim light back there, which is in a strip box. Uh, camera right and behind the model, and that is getting more of the power at 66%. Uh, it takes a little bit of getting used to not having equal outputs, not having individual control of each light. Uh, to kind of balance them out a little bit with the strip light, which is getting 66% of whatever amount of power is coming from that battery. I've gone ahead and put the reflector in there, uh, so that cuts some of the light. Then I've also put an internal white baffle, so now it's happened to go through roughly about two to three stops of white, you know, of white material, diffusion material, rather than just a light hitting a single piece, as in a standard softbox. For our key light, I've got a medium uh, Rotolux softbox on here. Again, this head's only getting 33% of my power coming from the battery, and so I just have one baffle of the main, the main white diffusion panel that goes on front of the softbox. And we're just shooting uh, at a diagonal approach with a two light, a uh, key light at a 45, a uh, strip light at a 45 behind, just giving us a nice rim light on one side. Uh, the key is since we're shooting in my lovely ghetto basement, we really don't have the ceilings to get high enough. See, she's laughing over there. No, ghetto, whatever. It is ghetto. And Whoville's not ghetto. Like many of you out there, I don't have my own studio yet unless I want to go rent one. And so the biggest problem I have is actually having enough depth of this room to move the model away from the background to drop that backdrop to, which is white, to drop that down to a medium gray. And so technically I need about 10 more feet so I can bring her further away. Remember, uh, not only does the size of an apparent light source affect its brightness, but the distance from the light to your subject does. So if I could move her away from the background, those lights that I have on her, this key light would have fall off a lot, lot sooner. I mean, and I have that distance from the chair to the background, so that key light's going to fall off, and therefore it's going to drop down to a lower, lower gray. Basically we've brought in our prop bed here, our lovely ghetto prop bed, and uh, we're still keeping with the two light setup. However what we're doing is now, uh, since we're not shooting full length portraits so I don't need the ground because obviously I'm shooting from the bed up, not the bottom of the bed, 
that I was able to move it further away from the background. So now I am able to drop the color of that white backdrop to more of a neutral gray since I've gained probably about five feet. So again, we're saying the key light, the light coming from the key light is now gonna fall off the further we may move it from the background, right? Inverse square law. So everything is dropping off. We're getting nice and dark back there. Uh, so instead of going with pure white sheets, we kind of went with an off-white sheet just so we're not, not quite blowing that out. And it'll be a little bit warmer tones and actually really complement her uh, nice tan skin tone as well. We have moved on to our uh, technically third setup, I guess. Mm -hmm. We have the prop bed, which is staying strong under my large weight. And I know if it can hold me, it can definitely hold Audrey. So we moved on to our third setup here in which uh, we've changed out our white background, which as you remember, we were dropping to a neutral gray or a little bit gray tone. We weren't doing white infinity. And now we've put in a nice medium, almost like a burnt sienna type brown. Uh, when which what our theory is is that's going to be the background. Uh, we're going to drop that off to a darker brown. We have kind of the off-white or cream color sheets, which you're going to kind of compare with the earthen tones of the brown. Uh, Audrey is in an awesome black cocktail dress, which is going to make her pop. And then with the red lipstick with the sealer she has on there, as well as the her bright, nice blue eyes, uh, that's even going to pop more. Uh, the only thing we've added different on this is that up above. Uh, up on the ceiling there, if you can kind of see that. Uh, we have an SB800 speed light uh, connected to a cyber sink, as well to a Bowen clamp, which I have uh, clamped on to the truss of my house. And basically that's just shooting on the background to give me a nice little uh, radio gradient on the background, if that makes sense. So you can see that there flash, it's just gonna kind of flash back there and hit the background and kind of make her pop a little bit more. So instead of just shooting uh, straight brown, it's actually going to give us a little bit of hot spot behind her, give her a little bit of that glow. So uh, how we were saying with the softbox earlier, how we had our key light at a 45 degree angle with the small Ellen Chrome softbox. Uh, like I said, I might switch over to a beauty light. Instead of just moving the softbox at a 12 o'clock high position and a butterfly lighting technique, uh, we're gonna hand just put on the, putting on our 27 inch beauty dish uh, with a white shower cap diffusion sock on there. And uh, we're gonna go for a beauty light. We're keeping the rim light and the separation light the same though. So we'll see what we can do. kept with the beauty dish we had a lot of fun uh, we did a few outfits the, we got the prop bed to, to hold out it hasn't broke yet with me and so if you've watched any of my other videos I tend to break furniture and hurt myself uh, 
So I'd like to introduce our model we had today. Uh, this is Audrey Miner. Uh, Audrey is a full-time cosmetologist. Mm -hmm. uh, and you've been doing hair for how long now? Uh, since 2007. 2007, and it's a passion for you. And it's a passion for me, yeah. We met when uh, we did the Audrey Hepburn shoot mm -hmm. and that, and I didn't do video on them. I wish I would have, because they turned out being great. But Audrey uh, did the hair for that, so if you go to my website and you saw those ones I did of the old vintage Jean Harlow and uh, Audrey Hepburn uh, type of vintage shots, uh, she did the, the hair for that, which is absolutely amazing. Amazing, I was like, wow, you made that look good. Are you kidding me? Yeah, but as any photographer knows, we are only as good as our makeup artists and our hair people, because with the type of lights we use, any of you strobus guys out there, any type of artificial lighting tends to wash away the mm -hmm. face. I mean, and I'm boosting anywhere about 400 watts in your face tonight, and so, uh, we don't want to lose that and so we're only as good as our hair artists I mean we can't we just can't we just can't function without you guys so doing the weddings and that yeah that pays the bills but every once in a while it's good to shoot for yourself to shoot something that inspires you and like I said you came to me with this concept which I absolutely loved which it's something I've never done me, and it's something that I've always wanted to do so, and so you. yeah so we got some cool photos uh, we're gonna get these guys in post and get them start processing and I'm Ben with BTS Photography at www.btsphotography.com. Thanks for enjoying my YouTube channel of wonder. Uh, I've been getting a lot of your questions via email. Keep them coming. I'll answer you as quickly as I can. And again, this is Audrey Miner. Uh, she works at Absinthe. Ab Absinthe. I can't Absinthe. say that word. Absinthe. 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 Like the spirit, like the alcohol. The green, the, gra the green, the green, gr the green gremlin. Fairy. Green fairy. <laughs> So she works out of that, and that is where? Uh, 1549 South, 1100 East. It's in Sugar House. In Salt Lake City, Utah, yep. for those people watching in Germany. Love you guys. All right, I'm Ben with BTS Photography, and we'll see you next time. Uh, I've got some really cool shoots coming up, and uh, I hope you join me. I bid you happy shooting. That's good stuff, in it? <laughs> you just keep on doing that and I'll put some No. <laughs> oh, my lips are good. I use, I use Burt's Bees. Oh, party oh shit, it's still going. <laughs> Damn it, clean us. the wine. It's a pretty little camera you, you got Chris? there. That's not hard to beat. So well, I, Chris, Chris you get any bird. closer, I'm going to bite that screen right there. Oh, I didn't realize you put that down further. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Ben. You know I work in a dynamic environment. <laughs>